Good morning. Sorry for my little delay in getting up here. Uh, let's give a hand right there for uh, what we just saw. That really put me in a relaxing state, so I kind of dozed off and forgot I was supposed to come up here and say a few remarks. So thanks very much. Well, welcome, everyone. Did you have a good day yesterday? Yeah. Great, great, great. We have another outstanding day for you today. I want to start off here by just really uh, highlighting and make sure I have this clicker right. I want to highlight my colleagues on the board of the uh, Carl Health Foundation. If they could please stand. They're not all here, but these are the individuals that uh, work tirelessly uh, day in, day out to really uh, push the mission uh, of the foundation. And I particularly want to highlight one individual, Don Murphy. Uh, he's out here over to my right. Uh, Don, if you want to stand. Don has just about completed nine years of service on the board, and he has really set a baseline for passion and commitment for what other board members should follow. So thank you, Don, for your service. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, a board tour that the uh, board took here just this past um, month. Actually, it was in June. As Karen spoke about yesterday about uh, being on the ground, how that was her favorite part of the job. And of course, uh, she always told us about this, so we were like, well, are you going to ever share? Can we, can the board go on the ground? So finally, we got to go. And I'm not saying that we haven't been out on the road before, but we have. But this was different. This was a little different. This is sort of like you can go back and remember when maybe growing up and your parents were saying, hey, we have some guests coming over here, let's clean up. And you know you cleaned up most of the stuff, great, but there were some things you didn't want your guests to see and you like shoved it in a closet or closed the door. Uh, and what, that's a trip sometimes we take where we see all of the great things. This was a trip where we saw everything, unfiltered, um, right in our face, uh, this was the reality. And what this did for us was give us the gift of perspective, which is a great gift to have. Um, we ended up seeing so many of have-nots and haves. And the board came away thinking that this was just an incredible power that we had there in being able to listen and hear other people's stories first. We had three tours. We split the board up in three. Uh, part of us went up towards Summit County. Another part of us went down uh, southern part of Colorado and another third of us went up to the northeastern part of Colorado. We ended up encountering many health issues, uh, but really what was highlighted for us was the lack of access to behavioral health services and the stigma that were prevalent. It was striking to see the cycle of poverty and the stress it brings. I had the opportunity to meet two women in Chaffee County who shared their life stories with us along with their search for affordable housing. They illustrated the social, indeterminates, the social determinants in health and how behavioral health issues are linked. Ultimately, they, they ended up illustrating to us the vicious cycle of poverty. I was really struck by their voices and by their stories, and I'd like to share them with you today. So, whose story does this belong to? It really depends on who you ask. But there's stories that I'm gonna share that were really told by these two individuals to us. Meet Laura, 39. She is on the left side of the photo. A few facts for her that I just want you to have for a little context. She lives in Salida as a single mother with her 16-year-old daughter. She has a 20-year-old son who lives on his own in town. She has a job building cabinets at Rocky Mountain Cabinets in Salida. Laura told us about how the opportunity to secure affordable housing at the farm in Buena Vista 
community will be a lifesaver and bring her peace of mind after bouncing around from place to place to place for years. She has this other impact that's hovering above her, a 30,000 uh, student loan. When asked about the struggles and how they affected her mental well-being, Laura broke down. And she started crying in front of us. Complete strangers, this was the first time we met her. But she was very transparent and she wanted to share her story. And she spoke about how the financial challenges can put, a constant, put her in a constant state of stress. And that she worries about everything all the time. Will I have enough money for food this week? Will the car break down and what, what will that cost me? What about childcare? Um, on and on and on. Economic and housing insecurity can often leave her physically and mentally exhausted. She envisions that having a stable place to call home will help her with these battles against fatigue and stress. As I stepped back and I tried to think and understand and have perspective of what this felt like, uh, about the only analogy I could come up with that kind of put me in that kind of a state. How many of you have driven on the highway in California? Any highway. It doesn't matter in California, it's any highway, you take your pick. Uh, I, I thought back, and I was in California a couple of years ago, and I was on a highway, it was about a 30 minute, uh, 30 mile ride. And of course, I, I'm a pretty offensive driver, I don't let everyone just jump in front of me, but I'm also, I'm getting a little older, so I like to get a little space. So I got, I'm in the left lane, I'm keeping up with everyone. I'm keeping up the appropriate space between me and the car in front of me, but I noticed as I got a little space that I felt comfortable with, another car would jump in front of me. And then I was like, ooh, let me back up. And then another car would jump in front of me. Then the car behind me is honking like, hey, keep up with the traffic. So finally I felt like I'm on the guy's bumper going 70 miles an hour, and I was like this the whole time. And I was stressed that 30 minute, 30 mile ride. And when I got out and I got to the hotel room, I told my wife, I said, I need a drink. Uh, that was just 30 minutes of constant stress, dealing with my, my arms were tired, I was physically kind of out of it, uh, mentally, uh, I wasn't stable, and yeah, I did go get a beer. And so, now I'm not saying that that is what it leads to, but it was the closest I can get to an understanding a constant state. And her state is 24-7, 365 days a year. Anastasia, she's on your right. She's a single mother to three children, ages 11, 8, and 6. She's recently divorced. She operates a licensed childcare business out of a rented home that serves 11 families in the communities. Anastasia's been trying to buy a home for a while, but can't get a home loan. She's really caught in a cycle here. She spoke about the pricing of local housing and the rental market and how the prices were rising quickly in the recent years. It had just taken her four months to find a new house to rent and it's $500 more a month. She's still looking for affordable home, and she's looking for, forward to the security of being able to have a place that she can call her own. She talked about her childhood and how often she moved from place to place to place, four times just within the elementary phase. And she wanted to put roots down for the sake of her own kids. She told us that belonging and the chance to make solid connections with other people are aspects of mental health and a benefit from having a secure and safe place to live. She really was just talking about community, belonging, engaging, being able to contribute. That's all she wanted. She understood as an entrepreneur this big need in this community of daycare. She provided additional resources for the individual ladies that would bring their kids in there. She understood the stresses that they were dealing with. She didn't have any of those rules. If you're 30 minutes late, here's the fee. She provided educational training for them. But as an entrepreneur, and she was a successful entrepreneur, at best, she was just breaking even. So imagine, you start your own business. You have visions of what you want to do, this purpose that you want to provide, and you're doing it well. Now, of course, 
there is this one small aspect that we all have in terms of we want to run our business. We want to make a few dollars, right? Like, okay, nobody wants to make any money if they're running their own business, so I won't. But we want to make a few dollars just to make sure we're moving forward and building a future. She's sort of in a cycle where she breaks even every year. Makes just enough money that puts her over the level of where now she can't get involved with affordable housing. Very difficult cycle. She could say, I'm going to pull back and not provide this very needed service in this community for these individuals that I know and that I've gone, grown up with my own kids and pull us away and do this another way for my own self. Or I could continue to go through this and try to see if we can break through. That's her world. I'd have to tell you, uh, listening to these two ladies, um, it, really, it really brought things again into perspective. Often we are in our own lane and our own daily lives, dealing with things that we think are so difficult, oh, at work, I got to deal with this person, the traffic, oh my God, what am I going to eat? And when we step out of our lane and see what another person's lane looks like, our lane actually looks very good because the lane that they live in is a daily, difficult, stressful lane that I have to give them all the credit in the world, they are managing it. And I think the important thing, as we met both of them, is that we saw some bright news uh, about a month or two afterwards. Laura, her application for the townhome that she was looking to get in was approved. And they had just broke ground on the property here just over the last month. I cannot tell you just from listening to her story what that meant to her. But I, I wish I could have been there when she saw the, heard the news, because I know it was uh, just something that was just mind boggling for her. And that's what this is about, what we're going through right now. Storytelling. It helps me, it helps others understand more about the complexities and in, of inequities and social determinants of health and how they affect our mental health. It, it helps us to empathize. It helps us to understand other people's lives. And all of this stuff is important, especially if we don't face the same challenges. They are a gateway to social change and social justice in so many ways. And today, yesterday, tomorrow, that's what it's all about impact of inequity and behavioral health issues on individuals and families. Some of you may ask why. And we just like to tell you, these things just give you a reality check. These are the things we have to combat. If we don't see them, quite honestly, they don't exist. If we stay in our lane, we're not aware of it. And we think our lane is what the world looks like. And the honest truth of it is, the world really doesn't look like what many of us see in our lane. It also highlights the diverse range of challenges that we can be battling at any one time. So taking us out of a narrow viewpoint and broadening it and understanding these complexities. Again, I call it taking it out of my own lane. And if we do nothing else today but to help you see another side or hear another perspective about the impact of inequity, we will be successful. So, on behalf of the Board of Directors, I really want to thank you all for being here and for listening to these stories and for, on your time when you're on the side, actually sharing your own stories. This is just a great deal to be able to do that. We'll hear more of it as we go throughout the day. I am really thankful for having the opportunity to serve on this board, to be here at this symposium. I'm really happy to talk to more of you throughout the rest of the week. So thank you very much. And with that, I'll bring up our fearless leader, Karen.